executive producer Carl Beverly. Put your hands together, people. For Carl. All right. The creator of Elementary, Robert Doherty, is coming out next. Come on down. He is Sherlock Holmes. Johnny Lee Miller. Joan Watson, and she's rocking the finest dress I've seen all day. Check out Lucy Liu, everyone. Yeah. All right, so guys, let's kick it off right now. Johnny, uh, a lot of people in this room know that you starred recently in Frankenstein. So much, um, you know. There's another show that comes out there at the moment, which a friend of mine's been involved in those movies as well. Um, I, you know, it was. I, we wanted to be sure that it was going to be very different. So you know, it's great. That's a conversation that we have. But it's, you know, it's a private conversation. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't private. <laughs> so um, you know, he's been very, very supportive actually, and uh, you know, we were just discussing what a wonderful character he is. And, you know, it's, uh, and then I just went back to the books really. That, that's where I got most of my uh, most of my information from. Most of my information. It's all from the novels and short stories. Uh, Lucy, we've seen shows like Battlestar Galactica, Y Five O, take male characters and turn them into females and have success with that. How, what does it do here? How does it change the dynamic between Holmes and Watson? Um, I always think it's wonderful when people do turn things on their heads. Um, I think Rob was really. Um, thinking outside the box, and I think in terms of casting, it was just a wonderful thing to be considered in that place. And you know, it's, I think the gender change also creates a dynamic and a chemistry that you don't normally see in in the films, and, and obviously in the BBC version. There's a there's a very strong link between the two, but there is a difference between. Um, when there's a man and a woman and a man and a man. And a man. I think there's just a, there's something special there in this particular show for us and there's potential. And I'm not saying that it's romantic, I'm just saying that it gives it a, a, a different shift, a little, bit of a, a little bit of a tingle. Did you say tingle? Tingle. <laughs> Robert, why, why, why give Watson the set? Why, why cut off poor Watson's penis, Rob? What? I mean, come on. A lifelong dream. Um, no, you know, it, I, 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 I was fascinated by the concept. I, 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 I've always been a fan of the, the original books and the original Holmes and Watson. And when this opportunity arose, uh, I, I did a lot of research. There had been a lot, of, a lot of psychological assessments of the original character uh, by actual doctors. And one of the things I had come across was that uh, Holmes struggled a bit with women. Uh, it was not really his priority. I mean, he struggled with people in general, um, but there are moments where he just doesn't seem to quite get uh, the, the, the fairer sex. Uh, and initially for me, it was just sort of, it made me laugh, the idea that what would be more uh, trying for Sherlock Holmes than, than living with a, a Watson, who's also a woman. Um, it started from there, the more I thought about it, it occurred to me that it just shouldn't really make a difference. Uh, I, I think, you know, I recognize that it's a challenge, it's a challenge of the series, uh, to not turn it into a will there, won't it. But it was never designed for that, it's not the intention. Uh, it's really about trying to honor this, the spirit of the source material, which depicted an incredible friendship that grew over time, an incredible bond between two professional people who are wildly talented and wildly intelligent, uh, you know, that more than anything is why I like the original books and the short stories, it was that relationship. So, so we all went into this feeling that 
uh, to a certain degree, it's incidental that, that Watson's a woman. The relationship should still function uh, the same way. And it's our goal moving forward, again, to, to try to honor what, what, that, what that bond is supposed to be. Carl, obviously, they didn't. Oh, they like that. They like what you said. That's nice. That's sweet. <laughs> Carl, are we going to see any of these other characters from the Sherlock Holmes universe? His brother Mycroft, the, uh, his nemesis Moriarty, or any of these people with Strahd, or any of these people going to be showing up? Uh, what do we think? I, I, I get interested. Very lately. Be very careful. Uh, only because we want to keep some secrets to ourselves. Uh, you know, what, what I've said in the past is that it would be a great shame to do a Sherlock project and not have Moriarty appear at some point in time. Yeah. Uh, I feel you know, they're, they're inextricable. Uh, and it's something we will be looking at as we, you know, as we, as we move through this first season, I think. Uh, it's, it's, it's somebody I'm really looking forward to writing and, and, and again, having Having our take on the character, uh, you know, getting our claws into him, uh, it's, uh, it's exciting. As far as other characters, Mycroft, I uh, love Mycroft, but might hold off on him for a bit. Uh, as you saw in the pilot, Sherlock's father is somebody we want to... His father will cast a shadow over a lot of what we do in the early, the early goings, but I love the idea of him as sort of a mysterious shadowy figure that we will eventually get to you know, get, get to build and, and, uh, and, and make a part of the series. I mean, the intention also is just to spend some time with Sherlock and Watson to really establish that relationship, get to know them. They're not friends right now when we meet them in the pilot, so we kind of didn't want to inundate the pilot and the show with all these wonderful characters that we're all familiar with. We wanted to spend a little time getting to know these two and letting them kind of naturally find each other, and then it feels like we can pepper in those characters over time. And do you guys, why are you guys going to sort of update famous old uh, you know, Arthur Carr Conan Doyle Sherlock tales, or do you want to make completely new stories, or a little bit of both? What are you thinking then? You know, there, there are no hard and fast rules for us, but I, I, what, what I always pitched from the very beginning, and, and, and especially now that we have a, writer, a writer's room and a staff putting stories together, uh, we, love, we love the original stories, we love the original uh, books. Um, okay. At the same time, uh, I think I'm speaking for the, the whole staff. Uh, again, what we love is the relationship. What we love is the mythology, uh, the things that sort of happen in between the beats of an investigation. And so, uh, you know, primarily, we're looking to craft new stories. We want to we, we want to expose Sherlock to new things. We've got him in a new city. We have him surrounded by new people. Uh, yes, familiar names will pop up along the way. Uh, but but moving forward, we'd, we'd like to like to contribute our own stories and material to the, to the cat. Johnny, you're, you're uh, Sherlock. He seems like to me like he's sort of right on the edge or occasionally he's smashing cars. A little bit over it. Just a little bit. But um, is this just the way he's wired? Is he just sort of, it, it struck me as, uh, we spoke earlier, it struck, struck me as like an impatience that his brain's moving at a certain speed and no one else is operating at that same speed and he's very jittery. Maybe that's the rehab. I'm not sure. But what is his sort of MO there? Yeah, I feel that uh, he struggles um, with the control of his emotions. And uh, just struggling with control generally. Um, you know, that, that can be a, a trait with, uh, you know, with addiction and stuff like that. So I thought, found that a very interesting part of the character. Um, that he's, you know, really struggling with those things. And, and the, the Watson relationship is really uh, going to help that, hopefully. You know, that, that's something for him to work out. Yeah, I really like the fact that he was not in control because he's got such a, you know, such an, um, a genius for, you know, solving the, the mysteries and, and looking at crime. But he really is not in complete control of himself, and I, I, I find that, I find that hopefully that might be relatable too for people. And Watson's helping him with that a little bit. Watson, Lucy, she's damaged goods too. She's got her own problems, right? Yeah. First, I just want to say that it's just. Really, I'm in awe of this audience being here and everyone. I just want to thank everyone. It's incredible. I mean, I focus on nothing else but the audience, actually, and it's fantastic. And it's, it's really wonderful that you guys came out to welcome us. It's exciting because we thought, oh my god, there's going to be like 10 people in the audience, but it's full. Um, so thank you for coming out, really. It's really exciting. It makes the trip worthwhile. Um, 
That being said, the, um, what was your question? I screwed up the whole Yeah. Yeah, the Watson's got a, a damaged past, and oh, while you're I, helping I, Holmes, Holmes seems to be helping Watson too. I, I think that, that Watson is somebody who is is flawed, and she's using this job as a sober companion to distract herself from looking at her at her own issues and dealing with them. And you know, emotionally, she's distraught, but she is dealing with his issues, so therefore it makes it much easier. But unfortunately, he sees right through her, and that makes her realize how exposed she is and insecure. I mean, they're, they're effectively, the relationship is saved later on um, because, you know, she is doing her job, and he's incredibly charming, and, you know, she's trying to keep it together. But it is hard because it's a very unique client, somebody that she's never had before. And I think that dynamic, as um, Rob and Carl said earlier, is going to be something that we build on. And, and hopefully the audience won't just come back for the procedural aspect of seeing the crimes and the murders or whatever's you know, going on. But to really tune in to see what's happening with the characters on an intimate level, I think that's what, what will engage the audience. It's, uh, it's secret sign time, people. I'm giving you the secret sign. We're going to try and get a, a question or two in, so please go to the center secret aisle. We'll sign. try and get a few questions in. And by the way, I just noticed that your name tags are here, but you guys sat over there as far away from me as possible. <laughs> I don't know if I've been on the convention floor too long and I stink or what's going on, but I won't try not to take it out personally. We have our first question out there. Yes, please. Hi. Um, this is a general question, but it's mostly directed towards Lucy. There have been many, many different versions of Sherlock Holmes, including a version where Sherlock and Watson are cartoon mice. So, <laughs> however, for some odd reason, there has been a lot of controversy because Watson is a woman and Asian American. So, I was wondering how you guys are responding to the criticism. Um. Well, I will start with the, the answer, and then you can move down. I'm sure Rob has some thoughts. Firstly, this is the first time I've heard anything about criticism. Um, thanks for letting me know. I do, we don't uh, check on anything like that. Um, for me, I mean, my entire career has been about criticism. If I didn't try new things, I would be still, you know, doing a Calgon ad. So you have to be a pioneer, and pioneers mean, being a pioneer means you have to do things that are not scheduled and they're different and they're out of the box. And so when you do stuff, it's not always to please other people, it's to please yourself. And if you can find something, you know, it's sort of, for me, the more individual you make something, the more universal it will be. So for me, if I make it special to myself, something talked about this I mean, from the very beginning of the project beyond great writing which Rob took care of we knew we needed great actors and Lucy was hired because she is a phenomenal actor that's why we were part and that was Lucy Lou so not haven't heard about the controversy but we feel very lucky to have Lucy and we feel lucky to have this you know this pioneer she is a pioneer she's played many many great roles and we're hoping this will be our next one yeah. All right, amen. We only have time for one more. Aww. If, if you didn't get your question in again, uh, send it to hashtag it's elementary and they will try to uh, get answers out to you. <laughs> it's not as good as in person, but it's the best thing we can do. Go right ahead, sorry. Uh, Johnny and Lucy, um, how difficult was it getting into character with all the expectations fans have of how Holmes and Watson have been portrayed so far? Good questions for the man. <laughs> what the wonderful thing about this, well, in a way, the fact that there are so many, <clears throat> over the years there have been so many interpretations, actually takes the pressure off a little bit in my mind. Um, but you always go back to the source material that you have, which is the books. I mean, regardless of the fact that I think we had a, a, a wonderful script, which is just the starting point for any project from an actor's point of view. Is the script any good? It doesn't matter what it's about. You know, you can have a great idea, but a, a bad script. Um, and we love the script that we have, and the story that we have, um, and the way it's been approached. But then you go back to the, the original material and these wonderful books. And for, for, for me, it's just, you can go through all of that, a lot of 
reading material and you can take what you want, what you feel hasn't been seen before. Um, obviously, this is stuff, stuff I can expect, in my opinion, stuff that, that you know, discover new stuff, bring it, try and bring it to the audience, disregard the older stuff and, and things that you can change and modernize, whether it be a, a sport that the original Holmes is into, and we can change that and make it a new version of a different sport, or, um, you know, the fact that the fact that they're always talking about guns in the book as well. I thought it was new to me. And the fact that the drugs are a part of that, that story as well, and Arthur Conan Doyle's original books. Mm -hmm. Incredible stuff, but lots of room to, uh, to maneuver there from us. So we're lucky because we have all of this, all of this stuff to read. So. I also think that pressure is a good thing. I think that there's that story about if you take a piece of coal and you put it on the table, it's just a piece of coal, and people pressure on it, it becomes a diamond. So it's nice to have pressure gives you an opportunity. So we look forward to it and you know there's always going to be different versions and I think um, what Johnny said was so true is that in the other versions and in, in other shows and movies and things like that um, they didn't highlight his drug problem or opium or cocaine anything like that it was sort of a taboo or it wasn't something they focused on but this is something that Rob wanted to kind of highlight and bring out and I think that starts the relationship and I think CBS takes a really big risk by bringing in um, a recovering addict and a sober companion because those are two things that don't really um, match with CBS and they're kind of breaking out in the 10 o'clock slot so we're kind of lucky to take that on.